What do you say as a as a writer who's been covering Kirk Ferentz in this program for two decades? Yeah. Plus, what do you say to fans like our our friend? I don't know if you heard the first caller that called in. Who say? I did. Very respectfully, look, I love Kirk as a person. I'm ready to move on. I'm tired of this. You know what? You know what? I I, I coined a phrase many years ago about folks like that. And I totally understand them. Totally. I mean, I get what they're coming from. Um, I called it Ferentz fatigue, which is just that he's been there for so long and, you know, you kind of want something different and I get it. I do. Um, you know, uh, but that's Kirk's decision to make. That's, um, Beth gets his decision to make. Um, th those are the folks that make that decision on, him continuing as the coach. I don't know, you know, what happens with, with Brian. I don't know that if somebody else was calling plays that it would be a whole lot different because it's Kirk has a philosophy as, as coach Patterson will tell you, he has a philosophy that he, that he abides to. Um, will he, will it work? I don't know. Um, but it's worked in large part in the past and when they hit these spots, they usually bounce back pretty well from them. So we'll see uh, if, if that will be the case this year or not. But I don't know, guys. I don't have a lot of answers tonight. <laughs> well, just real quick, I was, was going to make, make this comment. Uh, it wasn't the last time they went out to Happy Valley and lost, but the last time they went out to Happy Valley and got their butts kicked. Does anybody remember what would happen the next week? I'm sure you do. Both of you probably do, Tom. Was that the they beat Michigan? That was the 2016 Michigan yeah. upset in Kinnick. So yeah. you're, you're right about bouncing back. Um, I don't really know how much to even dwell on the the macro of all this because the conversations about what should happen with Brian and what should happen with Kirk, you're, you're right. Don. Those are those are not conversations that are even worth being had on September 23rd, 2023. Well, you can't. <laughs> you, they're not gonna. He's not gonna go fire Brian. It's just not. Brian's <laughs> no. not gonna quit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just, I, I, I think people think that that's, it's not going to happen, but, um, will this make them better? Maybe, um, we'll see what happens, but, uh, I, I guess the, the positive, if you want a positive, I don't know that it could get any worse, <laughs> right? I don't well, think it can get any worse. You say that only because Michigan is not on our schedule and maybe Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Watch watch this team make it to Indianapolis, Don. What do you think? <laughs> it better be a different version than what we saw tonight, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, real uh, quick before they I let can't, you go. They can't blame they can't go blame Spencer Petrus tonight. No. <laughs> no. And I think uh, a lot of the frustration here, we got about 1,200 people watching live right now at you know, cool. almost 11 p.m. Hey. Iowa time, Tom. And I think a lot of that frustration comes back to some of the changes that were made in the offseason, specifically uh -huh. a quarterback. And then you look at a stat line of Kate McNamara this evening. He goes 5 of 14 yeah. for like 43 yards. And he's had two weeks where he's been below 50% completion, two weeks in a row. And we've the one thing we've said about the offensive line to this point is, well, they look better in pass protection. Not anymore. Uh, not no, tonight. not tonight. So um, a lot of fans feel like we're right back where we were a year ago. And I'm not saying we are, but I'm just saying that's, yeah. I, that's, I can tell that's how a lot of fans feel right now. And they feel it's like a, it's fair to feel that way. It's totally fair to feel that way because yeah. they got, they got whooped tonight. The offensive line got whooped tonight and, um, and they know it and they know they got to get better. Um, uh, now the task is, can they get better? Because they got they got manhandled by Penn State. Penn State's really good. That's a top ten team, and this I, I I can't say enough about the atmosphere here tonight. It was electric. I mean, it was it was wild, and the fans were into it, and they were passionate, and they were fired up, and they were ready to go, and um, the team matched it, and Iowa couldn't match it. That's that's the bottom line. I know nobody's going to take any solace in this, but it didn't look like there were any significant injuries on the Iowa side. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. The, um, Kirk did say that Cade had some cramping in his hand, and that's why they took him out and put Deacon Hill in. 
but other than that, um, I think they came out of this healthy. So I guess that's a positive. Be interesting to see if they can get um, Jazz Patterson back. I don't know if Caleb will be back next week or not because he was he's dealing with the high ankle and that usually takes a month. So we'll see if he can if he can get back. And obviously Luke Lachey is done for the year. So you know the Calvary's not coming. You gotta you gotta go out and this guy's gotta get better. It is ironic for the last time, and I, I I said during the game tonight, I said, man, this feels like 2018. It's raining. You've got Cade McNamara dealing with a finger issue, just like Nate Stanley was in 2018. Um, and now, ironically enough, you flash back to 2016, you get pounded, and they follow it up, and next week they get a night game at Kinnick. I mean, it's the exact yeah. same scenario against a Michigan team, <laughs> a different Michigan team yeah. in a much different place in Michigan State. It's not a very good Michigan State team, but uh be interested to see the uh, – crowd turn up i'm sure it'll be packed i mean it's sold out yeah sold out people, people will show, show up. up people will show up yep. 